Hello, and welcome to the Catching the Octopus podcast. Here, we will explore how connecting inward gives us an advantage outward. We openly talk about the obstacles and challenges and difficulties that life throws our way and how they become moments of gratitude and things that can benefit us when we look back on our lives. I'm your host, Naomi Hurley, and it is my mission to bring you top quality guests that will share with you openly their obstacles and also the techniques they use to go inward that strengthens the way that they serve themselves and others at the highest level. Thank you for joining. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to this episode of Catching the Octopus podcast. Today, I have Niyama Ashong. Now, Niyama is a Sherpa to outliers and difference leaders who are dedicated to use what makes you different to make your difference. He's a co-creator in a world of difference movement and founder of the Outliers Edge. And I've been honoured to be a guest on that podcast. You really do need to go check it out. Niyama transforms the high-performing, high-potential world leaders of today into the leaders, brands, and organizations who will create a future distinct from both the present and the past. All of this is done through a mix of coaching, community, courses, and conversations that support human-driven leadership for business and impact. Welcome, Niyama. Thank you for coming along. Uh, thank you for the invitation, Niyami. Like, it's, uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here and an honor as well. I just love when you can do things like this and like do podcast swaps and just get really great people and connect to them. And so I'm really grateful and um, appreciate you very much, as you already know. Well, you know, as you say that, what, what comes to mind, I'm like, the podcasting is is really great, but what's really, that's really been like opening up my world is just having you as part of it. So uh, I'm glad we get to do it in this way. Uh, I'm, I'm honored to be able to have a conversation with, with you in this this format, but I'm just, I'm just really glad that we're going to keep growing together. Yeah. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit more about yourself before we get stuck into the nitty gritties of it all? <laughs> yeah. Let me get a little context for me. Um, so uh, short, short thing right now, what do I, like I'm living in San Diego. I'm a father of, of two small, small children. Uh, I like to bring that into the mix right now because oftentimes when I get into things around, especially around business, I, I leave that part of me out of it. And it's actually mm -hmm. a real big reality of, of my world right now. And the reason that that's so important is that at the core of everything that I do, it's been it's like how do we bring people into more belonging to themselves and to create different systems create different ways of making like impact and influence based on who they are it yeah. turns out that who i am right now is 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 uh in addition to being an entrepreneur uh also also father of, of those of those amazing children um in particular i am right now really focused on like the bringing together and community building of, of these outliers, people who see things differently and are building their businesses and building their impact in this way mm -hmm. uh, and seeing how can we go ahead and leverage that through their leadership to make, to make an impact. Um, I, yeah, right now I am just absolutely fascinated with what makes people different mm -hmm. and, and the components of it. Uh, I heard something the other day that, that like, that like shook me to my core and it said something along the lines of like, Rarity is about combination and commonality is about uh, separation. And wow. for me, I feel like that's really it. How, like everything I do is about how can we bring the different combinations of who we are, different parts of ourselves into the, into the mix and play from there. Uh, so that's, that's my, that's my contact. That's the way that I, that I choose to live the game. Um, and we can play from there. Yeah. I, I really yeah. love that. And you know, that outlier, you know, what makes us different is in all of us, isn't it? But we tend to, especially we need to fit in. So it's a really, it's a balancing act of showing how different we are, but still feeling like we're part of something. And so you're also building communities that support that and celebrate that, don't you? Yeah, I think, I think if I'm going to be real with you, like my number one fear is being alone. Um, yeah. And as time has gone on, that that went from like me showing up as a class clown when I was one and putting glue on my face, you know, so that everyone would laugh, yeah. uh, to like uh, just being someone who is just like an amazing people pleaser. Uh, yeah. me, like uh, on campus when they're in university, everyone knew my like I won't say everyone, one in thirteen people. We did the math, you know, <laughs> one in thirteen people uh, knew my name. 
Um, and now when it comes to business and leadership, it, it really comes down to, am I willing to be, I'm surrounded by great people like yourself. Um, but it comes down to, am I willing to be alone in what I believe? Am I willing to, to put myself out into the world and be visible in a way that um, is not necessarily uh, accepted by all? And from that place there, am I willing to, to be alone in offering something that feels true to me? in a way that feels true to me, even though I'm not seeing examples of it any, everywhere else. So that, that day, when I think about that, I think about that with the, with us different outliers where mm. we might be amongst other people, but like in the same, at the same time, we can feel alone. Mm. Uh, and right now the, I'm like, let me just keep things simple and just ask, I'm solving the question of, or answering the question of like, what happens when amazing people get together? It's almost like not too much else needs to needs to be arranged as long yeah. as we're all in the same room and able to create from there. You know, yeah. I think this is what like what happens when we like on this podcast. Like, I've listened in to the, some of the amazing conversations you had, and it's like I get to grow as a result of that. I like it's it's like I don't necessarily need to have the actual direction of what I'm trying to learn. It's just being in space and hearing the conversations and seeing where where people are taking things. It just sparks off different ideas. So we're we're all about that right now. At least I am. Mm. You know. Yeah, and, and, it's, and that fear is so real. And I think the first step of moving past that is acknowledging it, right? And a lot of leaders sit in this corporate patriarchal historical system that says we need to act a certain way, we need to show up a certain way, we need to talk a certain way. And there's still the ability to fit into that, but also using that courage to show up with that uniqueness that we bring to those roles as well. Yeah, I think there's an element here that like, how do we actually move things forward or maybe maybe not even move things forward. Maybe that's the wrong like dimension to look at. Maybe yeah. it's the dimension of like, how do we elevate? How do we continue to level things up? I think I think if we want to keep things moving forward, we keep doing more more of what we're doing, maybe even better of what we're doing. Um, but to really elevate something. Um, like it's a different, it's a different dimension that comes into play. And I, I think for me, the hypothesis I have to all of life is most people think that the way we come together is by finding out what we have in common. But like, I honestly believe it's about celebrating our differences. Mm -hmm. Um, and this becomes important from the standpoint of like, from a leadership perspective in terms of what in that celebration, how much more space gets to be created? How much more innovation gets gets to live? And how do we uh, be able to walk that line of creating abundant space for people to be themselves uh, and belong into the area while still getting things done? You know, uh, and for me, that's just it's just a really fascinating question. That I'm just like I've dedicated myself to it. Yeah, and you know, studies are now showing that they're giving facts that and statistics and figures that actually endorse what you're saying there and confirm that, you know, that diverse teams create all of these things, more harmonious workplaces, more innovation, higher productivity. But I think traditionally when we look at diversity, we look at race, gender, you know, religion. We don't always look at, but what is the uniqueness that that person brings? They might be the same race and gender, but they've got something that they may be fearful of bringing out. So how as a leader can we create an environment where people can just step forward and be an outlier, you know, and show you that difference? Yeah, I, I appreciate you bringing that in. I think that, you know, I, I spent a lot of time doing diversity and inclusion work at um, in my former employment where I was working in an advertising technology company. And before that, I was doing actuarial retirement consulting, you know, and uh, in both in those environments, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say it this way. Um, I remember being invited to like a diversity and inclusion event, my, my first week being on the job um, and thinking to myself, like who, if I'm in this room, like it was only, it was only like a certain group of people. Um, and at the same time, I was like, if I'm in this room, where's everyone else? And I'm like, and the feeling of feeling included actually was not, the, was not what took place. In fact, it felt like I was singled out uh, mm. and, and divided. Um, and that's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing that takes place where we're talking about inclusion, but the actual, like uh, con the construct in which we play in is actually puts people into groups right off the bat. So specifically to your answer around like how leaders can step into it. One, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm voicing and, and just expressing like, hey, we might be trying to, we might have really good intentions and we might approach things from a standpoint of like, this is what 
others are doing. This is what the best, like the best practices may be. And the invitation here is just to kind of look at it and, and, and offer like, how can you help someone be accepted for everything else about them? And in mm. particular, where I have found that has been the highest like levels of success is when leaders have been able to celebrate other people and in the way that is actually like unique to them. So an example, if you're trying to build a culture where people are taking risks, um, I, I was working in Singapore and it was like, uh, there was a lot of uh, people who were um, expats who were also leading team who were like, you just gotta go risk, you gotta just reach out the phone. I'm like for the people in Singapore, that's not culturally like how they would go about doing things. And for yeah. yourself, you taking a risk, quote unquote, um, in this context, isn't very risky given your background, given all these things, what does it look like for you to lead from, from the front and take on a true risk for yourself? And what what does that actually look like and how does that translate over? Uh, so I, I love to play in that kind of space there when it, when it comes into when it comes to leadership from that standpoint. Does that, does that resonate? Do you, do, what do yeah, you it, it does. And I think what connected with me was when you were saying about being brought in because you feel different but not being included. And I think in the early days to be able to establish these diversity and inclusion spaces, um, we did need to have tokens, right? A gender token, a race token, um, a religion token. But now I think we need to elevate to, like you said, we need to level up and expand and actually go into, no, no, we need to look at what these humans are bringing. You know, what about someone from the neurodivergent space? They might be harder to lead or more difficult to lead because we don't understand them, but gee, what can they bring, you know? And looking at it as making an, an environment rather than having token spaces. Yeah, I think that like the, it, it's felt, it's felt. You know, mm. And I think that there's there's an element of, of course, like I'm bringing in some of these examples here. Uh, and what's interesting is I have a lot of good memories from each of these organizations, but I do remember the impact of what it felt like in that place to not to not be seen per se. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and this is not, like it, you know. A well, it looks like you might have just dropped out for a second. Can okay, you're back. Sorry, keep going. You you just dropped out for a second, but we'll keep going if we can. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of times I think about like the word like authenticity and belonging. And when that when that comes in there, it ends up seeing like, how does that actually work in, inside of the workplace? Right? Mm. Um, I think that it, it, to me, there's an element here around like, where's the celebration that's involved, right? How can we actually, how do we actually slow things down? So there's a, um, to, to see the individual. Do uh, you mind if I give an example of this? Of, of sure, that'd this be great. Yeah. yeah. So there was a time where I was working in um, company culture inside of a, a tech company. And one of the things that we wanted to do there was to help create a more cohesive, like, um, feel with the organization there was the headquarters and there were several other like uh offices and it's like how do we all feel like we're all in, like one organization um and one of the ways that one of the things that we found through that experience was like that in actually talking with each of the different offices there were both their own little nuances that were taking place and things that were important to them. And when we had actually ignored that by kind of like saying like, Hey, we're at headquarters, we're sending everything out. You, you are included because we've sent it over to you. Yeah. Uh, they like, we literally, the people will come back and be like, thanks for the random cake. But like, this is what our <laughs> issue is right now. Right. Yeah. Um, and it became way more about how do we allow people to like, express themselves in a way that was like, like appropriate for them. It changed, it, mm. it changed from being like one centralized version of this is what, this is how we're doing things. It's how we can all come together to instead let's, let's allocate budget to various like cultural champions in each of the different offices uh, mm. and, and manage a program that allows those, those offices to go out and do the things that are like, that represent that, that office um, and build, build culture, build tribe together um, from, from that perspective. So we might come together and hear like someone went to like uh, a laser tag thing with, with, with their group and other people went to like a library and volunteered together because that was where, where it is. And it's these small areas of just really allowing for the individuality to take place within the context. Uh, it, it, it just ended up really shining. Mm. And when people feel safe, then they can come into themselves, right? They don't have that apprehension. And so 
how would you recommend for someone to figure out their outlier advantage? Ah, that's a that's a really wonderful question. I have so many different tools, so I'm going to bring in bring in this one right right now. Yeah. Um, uh, we're in the context right now of I think this actually works whether it, if you whether you are a leader, whether you are um, a, a, an employee and practitioner, or whether you're an entrepreneur. And uh, one of the key things that I look at when it comes to the outlier advantage is just to pay attention to the things that feel so easy for you. Mm. Like, like 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 why. And you ask yourself this, it's not, it, it doesn't really come across as though it's easy, but instead it comes across as like, well, either, well, everyone could do it. You almost like, you almost like push it aside. Well, this is not that important. Like anyone could have done this, you know, yeah. um, or, or you go through and you're not like people come back and they say, wow, I'm so excited. Like, I'm like, I can't believe you did this. And you find yourself, um, kind of pushing it away uh, that usually right there is one of the first places to go and look at the outlier advantage um, and be able to say like wait a minute I keep getting what you're getting right there is actually feedback feedback about something yeah. about you that is actually quite exceptional and I and typically the I don't even think it's like resistance as much as it is like deflection I'm like the greater the deflection the stronger probability that it's actually something that you do that is that is quite powerful um, and well, I like to start with that because that's an area where if you're able to grow your awareness of it, you can actually start to hear and see it happen on a regular basis. Uh, and it also works out very nicely that like tied to this is oftentimes when, when you're feeling annoyed, when you're like, come on, this was so easy. Like, why isn't it done? It's like, yeah. let's pause real quick. Is it objectively and universally uh, easy or is it something that you yourself are like actually pretty adept at and I can mm. I can make that real uh, as necessary in terms of like ways that, I, that I'm bringing it to my world and such but uh, I have found that to be one of the cleanest ways because it's just, it's just like you're just living life uh, mm. and, and mm. as and as those opportunities come up it's about this really slowing down and saying wait a minute perhaps this is not what everyone does and there might be something something that I often say to my clients I'm like and that's why they pay you what they pay you you're like this is so yeah. simple I'm like yeah that's why yeah. they pay you what they pay you. And that freaking resonated so deeply. And yeah, what, what's, tell, tell me what's connected. Oh, oh for me, because um, my connection with people and I think my connection with something bigger than us has always been there. And I've been in environments that I've downplayed that. And everyone listening to this podcast knows I'm stepping into that. And, and you know, that was what our podcast um, interview on your podcast was about. And, you know, when I sit there and I do, especially the past life regressions, when I do that, I do have disbelief that sometimes it's real because to me, I don't have a plan. I don't have a format. I just sit there. I do what I need to do. And then at the end, people are just wowed and amazed by their experience. And I'm kind of like, oh, it couldn't have been that big a deal, right? Because it came so easy. And and this has been a big, you can hear me starting to get excited, I'm sure. This has been like my biggest shift in the last 12 months is really coming into what, uh, what you know, what is my outlier and how can I serve from that place and being proud of it rather than being fearful of it and what that's going to create with aloneness and separation and rejection. And so, that if if anything else in this podcast I got that really connected with me. Thank you so much, Neo and Niema. Yeah, and you know the thing that comes for me is like it's like when you mention it, like the past life regression, I, I had the pleasure of experiencing it with you, so I I, I get that. Yeah. I get I get that experience. But when you brought when you brought that up, I actually felt closer. Right, it actually brought yeah. me in because because for me, and it's, it's like ah, oh, got you you're like you're doing something different one mm -hmm. right but it's, it's not even that it's just different in and of itself i find it's like it's, it's not necessarily different for the sake of being different it's that you have something you have something unique to offer right and it is and it is you and it's and the ability like i find like that part like when we're able to make like put that into the advantage like that becomes the part that becomes valuable mm -hmm. in addition to everything else like I love talking to people and, and then eventually they'll come out and say like, you don't know this, but like, I can read energy. I'm like, yep. aha. Mm -hmm. I just thought like, I thought I was out here watching you. Like, I'm like, she like, she's just exceptional. He just like, he just like knows what's going on. It's like, Oh, they have a whole other dimension of, of their, their experience in every moment at a higher level 
of dimension than, than I am. Of course, mm -hmm. there's, there's things that are that are available to me. And since I am not currently accessing, I'm, I, I've come to the belief that like these things can be strengthened like a muscle. Correct. Yes. Um, but since I am not currently accessing that, how awesome is that 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 we have you and like what can we do together with that? I think that that's the second that like that question of like okay, what can we do with that? Mm. You know, where where can we go from there? That to me, I think is like the the unlock because I I I don't want to be on here just saying like you know be different for different sake, be authentic for be like for authenticity's sake. Like there's a lot of merit in that, but there's also just like real business and and this real business and impact uh growth that comes from being able to actually leverage into something that is beyond the capabilities of what was there beforehand mm. and and for me i think it's feeling energy right that that's something that i do that's unique and turning that and it helped me in the corporate space as well don't get me wrong but i would never speak about it i would never make it something that was um you know seen by others it was just something i did and now when i'm stepping into a world where i get to do this and i get to talk about it it just levels me up to something else and you know it, it takes me into what you just said before about you know things that we don't know about other people tell me what what don't you want me to know about you Nia? Uh, i'm glad i'm glad you asked that okay now now my heart's beating right now uh, <laughs> and i'm like i'm like cuz i, I want to answer it honestly yeah um let's see what don't I want you to know about me? Um, I'll go here because this is the one. This is the one that that feels the the most real. Like the last twelve months of business have been the hardest twelve months of business for me up mm -hmm. until this point. Um, up until this point, it has felt as though everything has come rather easy. Um, mm -hmm. And realistically, I don't necessarily know if that was actually the case, right? Which is like the real like that's if I go even a level deeper, like there's a part of me that questions that that like, spe stepped into a place of questioning was i seeing things as true as they were yeah. or was i like was i living with rose colored glasses just kind of saying like kicking the ball down that down down the court um mm. so the last 12, 12 last 12 months for me has been like one of the most difficult and trying times for me uh from a business standpoint here um but also one of the most like rewarding because i'm like it's it's brought me back to honestly just some real fundamentals um fundamentals of business uh and fundamentals of math so like it's like yes i have the the culture side of things but i also have the retirement actuarial work here and it's yeah. and there's just some things where it's like uh i'm able to take solace in in just looking at the numbers and mm -hmm. and allowing that to be true um it's but that, i think i think i don't want that to be that, like that's something right here yes that i don't want you to know about me it's yeah. uh yep all right i'll 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 pause right there because i can feel myself be like oh that, now now that the cat's open i'm gonna just like keep going but yeah. let, let me let me pause with that yeah. i want to be real with you on that you know i not the way that you put it together but i know of a lot of businesses you know i work with a lot of people and um have a huge amount of connections and you're not alone in that space and um, from where I sit, I think it's something we don't talk about a lot in business because we have this perception that everyone expects us to be successful all of the time, but it's just like life, right? Like life has its ups and downs. We have really great moments and then we have low light moments and that's the cycle of business as well. And I love that you're just embracing that and sitting in it and going, okay, well, where does this take me next? You know, instead of fighting it. If you're enjoying this podcast, and you want Naomi or any of her guests featured on your podcast or as a keynote speaker at your next event, you'll find their contact details included in the show notes. If you'd like to learn more about how you can work with Naomi individually or as part of your strategy to improve leadership in your business, then review the courses, offers and services at getupandgrowconsulting.com.au. Yeah, you know, I think I think one of the things that that came up, and I, like I'm grateful now for this opportunity to share mm -hmm. that, right? For two things: mm -hmm. one, internally, like I don't have to hide. I'm not here, like I, like I don't have to posture. There's just like it just it just is, right? Yeah. Um, there there's that one. Uh, two, in actually identifying and speaking to to the issues, like I started to actually solve the real problems. Yes. You know? Um, and that that was and, and the the challenges, like the solutions weren't complicated. It was just like, oh, I haven't worked this out yet or i have to like I, like 
it, they were all very attainable solutions. Like it wasn't like, oh, and seeing and seeing the reality of the situation, I like ran and like was shocked and like couldn't move. Yeah. It's just like, oh, okay, I gotta just I gotta make some real changes, you know. Um, and there was one other element of this year, which is just like the what's actually coming out is like what's being built now feels better and stronger than before. And I mm -hmm. think, I think with that, you know, I talk about the element of like bringing all of you to the table um, and, and being different, but there's, there's a real courage element that's, that's involved in that. Right. It's, it's to your point here, when you're talking about when you're like, will people, will people accept it for me right yeah. now, I'm bringing in uh community. The question that always comes to my mind is like, well, will people think that I'm pivoting once again? Do, yes. Does that look like I'm not being serious? So on and so forth. Yeah. But the reality here, and this is like something that came uh, as a huge benefit of the time we spent together in the past life regression. Like I get what my soul like is actually asking for. Mm. Um, and, you know, I like, it's like the more that I feel like I'm in resistance of that, the more like I'll get things done because that's who I am. Um but if I can choose a path that is smoother, given all the work that needs to get done anyway, mm. um, I'd rather go down the path where there are more green lights in, in alignment there. And I think that uh, that's starting to show up for me, like in spades since, since that session. Yeah. So so tell me then, let's dive a bit deeper in that. What yeah. does your soul desire that your fear is yeah. not letting you accept? I'm going to really like, I, I want to make sure that I actually answer this question rather than like, you know, skip over it. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to just give you the, the, the service level, level question. I appreciate you actually asking, um, ask it to me one more time. I, you can ask exactly the same way, but I just want to be like, I don't want to craft the answer in my head. I just want yeah. to just give you the, the response. So you were just talking about, you know, um, unraveling a little bit of your soul's desire and stepping into that but what does your soul desire that the fear isn't letting you accept because that's what holds yeah. us back right is that fear element yeah my like the, the what is coming out of me right now is that my my soul desires to to play and to do it imperfectly um mm -hmm. and the fear right now is that it's not letting me accept that it's like it's like is things need to be organized things yes. like the, it, things need to be everything needs to be in place. Um, you know, the right marketing needs to be in place there. Yep. The exact needs, the, the exact product should be ready to go right off the bat. And all that in my soul is like, you know, you need to do this a B and this is just how I am. Um, it really just comes down to like, it's not, you can't build it alone. Not because I'm not capable, but because like, this isn't for me. I'm not building it for me. Yeah. I'm building it for like for a group of people. And it's and it's what's happened for me. This is why I, I looked at my one on one practice and said, I have to change things up because mm -hmm. I was trying to to solve a problem of connection, belonging, knowing what's valuable for you, being able to be in space to say, like, hey, this this is actually easier for me than other people to be able to see those those advantages. And I was doing it in like a in an isolated space. Mm -hmm. You know, as opposed to what I what I know and believe, which is like, hey, you really get to grow when you're in reflection with others. You yeah. know, um, and this is why I love teams. Why I love work, break, like entrepreneurs. And I think about, I think in a lot of different ways. My soul is like, you got that experience in the tech company, working inside of an organization where everything was already established, and they had already brought together outliers, mm -hmm. and they had created something here. It's your turn to go and make it make open up some doors for people who don't have that experience yeah. to still get that like feeling of, Hey, we're going to do laser tag. I still get to be seen. I'm still a part of something, so on and so forth. But the fear is very much like you need to sit down, have everything organized, build every, build everything out first, make sure the outlines there, make sure you know what you're going to do on day 22 at yeah. 4 PM, so on and so forth. Right. Yeah. Um, and the reality is I'm like, the real thing is like, let's just hit, let's hit play. And what I do know is that like, I care mm. and I'm, I am unrelenting. Uh, I guess maybe others may, you may also say relentless. Um, and what I would like to bring to the table is far more than what most people offer. Mm. And 
Like, so I think that's like, that's what my, my soldiers is like, get out there and go play and stop trying to stop trying to analyze where every single foot's going to go or what every single like play is going to be. Uh, and just go take some beatings for a little bit, go lose a couple games, you know, Mm -hmm. Yeah. um, and then Yeah. come out here and, and, you know, get your MVP, uh, from there. So that's, that's what's playing out there. That's like, this Yeah. is the, this is the true outpouring of, <laughs> of the album's like, uh, experience right now. And it's Yeah. like I'm it's being in a space where it's imperfectly perfect. Right. And I, I don't think we allow ourselves to go there, especially when we've got, uh, we've been fighting all of our lives to be able to show up. and to be able to get credibility for who we are. And so when we step into our outlier, it's so foreign that we haven't given ourselves permission to just go, let it be what it is. Let's just see where it takes us. I, I think that's it. And I think there's, there's a, there's a model out there of, of kind of maybe I'll call like the guru model where it's like, if I show up, even in my outlier, I must know it all. I must Yes. be like, like people are coming for me or coming for what I have to say and so on and so forth. And I must have everything like uh, directly organized for me. It kind of bores me Mm. Mm. right? where I have found real growth and accelerated growth. You know, look, there's a time and a place I find when you need to like, just go learn like the basics of something or learn how to get something done. Uh, feel like I, I don't knock that, but what's been missing has been like, where's that space where I can be surrounded by a peer group of people who are also playing this and we can come together without necessarily not, not having a specific expectation in terms of the direct output, knowing that indirectly we're going to get the output that we're looking for. you know, um, or the output that we're, we're free to like ask for, like you, even in this conversation, like you're asking me questions that I hadn't really like given myself the space to reflect on for myself. Mm. Mm. And we're having a conversation right now in a podcast format, which I know is going to go out to your awesome audience here. Right. And you're asking me questions that like, I, because this will live on with other people and live Yes. on into the future. It changes the context in which I answer the question. So now I can feel my, like there's something in my leadership tank that shows up. There's something in my, like um, in my, can I be alone tank? Cause I also know that there are going to be some people who reach out and say, Hey, by the way, when you shared that thing, you didn't want let us know about it. I felt something release inside of me, Yeah. you know, Yeah. like it, it's been, it's, it's been a wild journey on that. And and that's what leadership's about. I feel like it is just showing up and playing and trying new things. And, you know, traditional training is all focused around time management and planning and which are important, not saying they're not, but we also need to be a little bit spontaneous. We also need to feel our way through leadership. And, and that's why I do the programs I do to help people connect with themselves more so they can feel what they're doing rather than trying to fit into a box. And that's where the real impacting leaders are made. I, I I think that's it, and you know I I get that I get the fears of like like how, can I bring this into my day to day like like how would this work if I brought it to my clients or brought it to my teams and so forth uh, I think there's another reason why I like to create the the spaces I create I, I call it a community because that's what most people get but if I'm really gonna just say like what does my soul want to say right Mm. it's an ecosystem it's an ecosystem Yeah. that that's out here where it's like people get a chance to I often I'm all places like being in a Oh, I think we've just dropped out again. Sorry. Can Am you I? just say that again with you were talking Yes, about an absolutely. ecosystem? Yeah. So what what I find is like my soul's like, actually, this is not a community. It's an ecosystem. And Mm. and people often say to me, like being in your space is like being in a sandbox. I'm like I'm, I'm a catalyst. Like people, like you get a chance to, to do things and to uh, to iterate. I was gonna say fail, but I don't think it's about failing. Failing. It's about. It's really about iterating to to the point where it can become embodied. It's a like, and so I'm I'm often the a person where we'll bring together people and they'll get a chance to give a speech for the first time, and get honest, real feedback with people who actually have taken the time to get to know them, as opposed to saw something on Google, heard something from another another person, Mm. Yeah. uh, and they're like, here goes like the five things you should be checking your box on. Where it's like, realistically, we know that you have so much depth to you. And what Mm. we got was 10% of that. Yeah. Like, like to the point that like, like Naomi, like you're awesome and you're like, you're able to hold me to account, you know, and, and like to really get to what's underneath some of the things that I'm saying, which is in my mind, one of the most beneficial things that a leader can do for anyone. 
mm. uh, and to help them really allow that expression out there so that that, that core component that is looking to be uh, created out in the world actually gets a chance to be done. Or another way of putting it here, if that sounds a little bit too high level, um, the method in which to complete a task can be um, accelerated through the ways that like most resonate with that individual. Mm -hmm. like, and, and I feel that right now with you, there's some questions that I've had in my mind. I'm just like, Oh, I, as we talk, I can feel that kind of melting away. Uh, and instead just feeling like more and more in when I say own in my outlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And going into that inward space. And, and I love also in my podcast, I kind of go, I'm, we're going to go a little bit more deeper, right? So just brace yeah. yourself. Um, right, but there's cool. Hold a on. I'm holding on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> um, but there's, there's a couple of questions that I ask all of my guests and it's more about, you know, showing the way that we can go inward. And the more we talk about it, the more it becomes familiar to people, the more they're going to be open to do it because it's not always um, a pleasant experience, even if the outcome is amazing. And so one of them is, you know, the biggest obstacle you've had to overcome and how did that strengthen your connection inward? So could you tell us a bit, a bit about that? Yeah. Um, let me, let me, let me get real with it here. Cause I, I've had the answers that I had in the past and it's been yes. a while since someone asked me that question. So I really want to, want to take advantage of this opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I'll just go here. I think I'll just just put it put it out into the into the world. I think that the the biggest struggle for me for a while was um it really feels like like a, I'm good, right? Mm -hmm. I I feel good. I feel like I, like I'm getting the chance to really pursue my my soul's purpose. Um I have a lovely wife uh and there's an element of the the struggle comes down to when the business was not doing great like how much how much more pressure she was feeling yeah you know? uh and really like the impact that it had on our like on our relationship and the way that we related with each other mm -hmm. um the the feelings of, of being the man to be like okay am i providing the way that i want to provide you know so on and so forth and um and like shedding like how like any kind of cultural norms to be able to create something beautiful for us inside of a relationship. And we, we ended up taking some time uh, on a, on a trip together, got a chance to actually talk about like the future we wanted to create together, create the visions of, of what we wanted to, to create in. Um, but it was that. really trying time. Yeah. It was really trying mm -hmm. time to, to really look into it and, and see from that, that perspective. Mm. I don't know how to describe it, but it's, it, it it's, the the way I look at it here, I've always felt this way. It's like it's like I married someone who was independently awesome. And so if if we're doing this thing called life together, like it only works for me if she's being uplifted. Yeah. And when it felt like I wasn't holding up my end of that bargain, it was gotten, you know. Um, I think that there's been a lot that we've done to put things in place and to to really calibrate on there. Um but that's that I would say is, is like the most difficult things. There's things happening in the business. There's always ups and downs there. But th that relationship is so important to me. Mm. You know, um, I, th I think it's like the foundation on which everything else grows. So uh, from that from that perspective, if I was going to be really real, that was that was that's what that's what feels like it really deserves some space right now. Mm. And sometimes we miss, you know, that it's bigger than ourselves. And I, and I don't endorse people losing themselves for other people, right? We still got to bring our outlier in, but working together and complementing, I think that's where it's at. And so I love how you shared that. Um, yeah. What is the main challenge you've experienced in your life that you're now grateful for? Because I kind of believe, you know, um, crap can actually turn into fertilizer, right? If you're in manure, yeah. one day it's fertilizer. So can you give us a bit of a example of where that's happened for you yeah let me let me think through because it, it's funny because in a lot of different ways i'm like i think that most of my world like for a long time had been like just on the up and up like mm -hmm. realistically i had um when i talk about the challenges i've been facing i i, I would characterize it like i feel like i got kicked out of heaven like cause it was just yeah. like everything was so so good but then again it comes back to that element of like how much of this was actually was I actually just like not acknowledging mm. uh, taking place uh, in, in real time? So 
I'm I'm actively, I, I promise you, I'm actively searching right now for uh, a place where the, the question was around like a challenge that I, that, that I faced, is that correct? Or did I? Yeah, did I... something that at the time, a challenge that at the time was like, ter like really horrible um, that you really didn't want to be in, but later on had a look and went, oh, I'm actually great, grateful that that happened. Like it actually created something for me. I know that there's something here, Naomi. I'm not. I'm not hiding from it here. Yeah. Um, I. I'm gonna. I. I think. What I'll answer the question that I'll answer it with what's coming for me right now. Um, yeah. But I. I would wish that. Like. I'm also searching for anything. If there's anything deeper there. Um. So right now, I think that the the thing that comes for me is probably about a year ago. Uh, I ended up with yeah, it's, yeah, a lot of things have happened in the last year. I think that's yeah. that's probably why. Like this is what this is what, yeah. this is what the real deal is. <laughs> like, like, we're going like, here. Like, we've got lots deal. to choose from. So, right? yeah. uh, so uh, about a year ago was my birthday, and at that time, I ended up moving from working full time in my business to working half time. And when I say half time, it was really uh, three hours, like three uh, allotted hours from nine a.m. to twelve p.m. And then mm -hmm. I would spend the rest of the day um, with my daughter in the afternoon. And the, it, it made sense given where, where things were. Yeah. Um, but it was, for me, that was one of the most difficult try, times of my life. I love my daughter. I love spending time with my daughter. There is just something about doing it, doing like what I considered the work hours that was yes. like really messing, messing with me. Yeah. Um, and, you know, realistically, like the, the challenge of that here was that I felt like I wasn't showing up great in either way you mm -hmm. know like like i didn't feel like i was like being an awesome dad and we were like we went we we could go to the zoo every it's San Diego is a great zoo we could go there every single day and i would feel not like nothing about it you know yeah i'm um, like i think i'm supposed to go do something different but like this feels this is what i love doing yeah um and so the reason that now i'm grateful for it is that during that time i i had a chance to start getting very real about what mattered mm. where there were leverage points for me um talking about the outlier advantage it was like i can't just do things that i that like fall outside of my outlier advantage like i like where are the highest leverage activities that i can take on mm -hmm. and it really gave me a chance to like slow down and essentially align things so that like I was getting higher and higher leverage from it all. And then the last part of that is that like, yeah, it, it, it forced me to stop using my charisma uh, as a way to, to move forward and instead like create more structure and infrastructure yeah. such that like when those three hours were on, it was more, I was getting more output. I was doing more than what I was getting from like a full eight hour workday beforehand. Mm. Um, I also learned that it's very, very, very important to be careful what you wish for. Uh, I, I said, as a lifestyle <laughs> business, I'm going to work a half day. It's going to be great. I'll work a couple hours every day and I'll be, <laughs> be free. I could go to the beach. I could do this. I got it. Yeah. I got it. And I learned, I'm like, I actually love to work. Yeah. I love to be like, to to challenge thinking and so on and so forth. And so, uh, yeah, that I didn't, I didn't know it at the time. Uh, it was a difficult, really difficult time uh, overall. Mm. Um, mm. But the, uh, it really just honed in so much to me. And in particular, it brought in the math side back. It brought back in the systems part of me from that retirement actuarial days, which I had let go to pursue coaching and to and to build community. It's like, oh wait, there's a whole part of me that has been trained here. Yeah. This part, my, my soul knew I needed to do this part of the journey. Yeah. Yeah. I just kind of had left it out for a while. <laughs> and it became one of the, the most important parts um during that time for me. And, and, you know, life has a funny way of giving you what you need, not always what you want. Right. Oh, uh, Naomi, I mean, when you say it like that, like, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like, like that, that's it. Like it, it, it's, it's uh, life. Yeah. yeah. It, it has, it has its way of playing it, playing its game. Um, it does, I'm down yeah. for it. I'm down for and it. I think that's what I've learned the most um, over my growth and, and, you know, expanding myself is I'm learning to, play the life game instead of resisting it. And there's still going to be resistance because we're humans and I'm still going to have that suffering and that pain that pops up. But the more I play in alignment with the game of life, the less pain and suffering I experience. 
That, that to me feels really real. Um, that to me, at least in alignment for some reason, the word like to like just like dance more in it, yeah. you know, to just allow like to allow that to be. And it's not to be, um, yeah, I actually, no, I'm not going to have any kind of disclaimer or anything else around mm -hmm. it. It's like, yeah, just the dance and play just more with, with the game of life. Yeah. And I, I don't know if you know um, the barn dance. It was a dance um, that I did when I used to go dancing with my nana and stuff. And the uh, yeah. steps are um, one, like forward, one, two, three, kick, back, two, three, and then side together, side, side together, in. And then and then you do more sides and then you waltz. And that comes into my brain that that dance is about three steps forward, three steps back. Let's go to the side. Let's come back in. And then let's just dance and let's just have fun. And, and I feel like life is like a... It's a bit of a metaphor for life, right? We're going to have steps forward. We're going to have steps back. We're going to go sideways from time to time. But once we actually can do all of that, that's when we get to have the fun. That's when we get to get, feel the joy that comes with the dance. And um, I think, yeah, I, I just felt like I would share that. I, I hope it aligned with you as well. I'm like, I'm sitting here flabbergasted. I'm like, oh, that is, that is, uh, I, I love like the, the meta thinking around it and the application of, of that. Um I'm thinking now about like the Cupid shuffle. I'm like, what other yeah. what other lessons can I learn from from dance moves? I've never thought uh, about the application in that way. And and uh, I just want to say thank you because there's going to be something that goes on in my life and like that I, that I'm not knowing and I yeah. don't know when it's going to happen. And I'm going to be thinking about the barn dance yeah. in this moment. Well, and I'm just going to be like, let's just waltz through this. You know? Yeah, and even the cha cha. Right. The cha-cha is going forward, going back. I mean, we talk about life being a dance and, and you know, stepping into the dance. But if we really nut down, there's, there's a deeper level to that, right? Dancers have steps that take us everywhere. And it might look messy to one person who doesn't understand the dance. But when we're in the dance, we're just in it. And so it doesn't matter where our steps take us. You know, it's more about what we're feeling. And I think we miss that in life sometimes where we're worried about putting it in a box and showing up here and doing the things. And we just forget sometimes just to feel it. And just like you said before, follow what that soul is telling us to follow. That's it. And I like, I like, I, I'm appreciating the element of dance right now. Like when I, when I, Think about it. Like I have this saying that I say to myself, which is like, you just need to go shake your booty. Like yeah. something, something about that just like opens up things for me. I'm just like, I don't know where, like if where the mojo is held, but it's like in my lower half. And the moment I start shaking, like <laughs> everything else starts to, to blow. So I, I'll, I'll have to go and like do a little, like do a little move <laughs> yeah. after this year. Yeah. Just to, just to tap into that. <laughs> yeah. And and look, my last question is, okay. um, you know, connecting with that inner self. I feel like when we yeah. strengthen that, we are able to dance with a lot more, I suppose, self awareness and less worries about if it's right and if it's wrong. So, what daily, weekly, or monthly practices do you do, Nehemiah, that strengthen your connection with your inner self? Yeah, um, I think that there's the few practices that I, that I choose to take on is kind of whittled itself down uh, in any given moment. The, the one practice is just to practice honesty and gratitude yeah. along with it, but honestly yeah. uh, I appreciate like the questions that you're, you're asking. And there's, there's times where I've wanted to answer the question. I'm like, in terms of what does, what, how does this align with the bio that I put out here? And the other part <laughs> of me is like, let's just be real yeah. uh, and go with that. So that was one of my biggest, I'm a recovering people pleaser. So yeah. like it's actually, it's actually an ongoing practice to, to speak truth as it is in that moment. So that's one. Um, the second thing is I used to meditate and now I do like, I call it priming, which is just like getting my day ready. So I have, I listen to something from Tony Robbins every day. It's about a 15 minute exercise there. Yeah. Um, J John Wineland uh, in California, he has um, a great exercise called a T generator that I also use. Um, and that's been something that really has built the nervous system to deal with discomfort. Um, yep. So much so that that sometimes so one day I was at a Halloween party, someone's mask caught on fire, and I was just like, "Oh, by the way, that mask is on fire," and just kept moving forward. You know, <laughs> I was like, "I was like, I this clearly something is working here." Yeah, clearly something is working here. But, uh, those that would be it. The the ongoing practice of of when when whenever possible to just speak the honest truth in that moment. Mm. Um, the the daily practice of of 
doing the priming of uh, the priming exercises and, and growing the chi. Uh, and the last one I'll say is, is just gratitude. And mm. I, I, I think that if I was going to be like, if I was thinking about like, what was the thing that helped me overcome the last year, it was to start recognizing how fortunate I was to be an entrepreneur and mm. to be in these places. I thought I was doing things wrong. I was like, oh, this is finally my story. When yeah. they, like, like, they, like they, there's no entrepreneur I know that like, has gone through and said, I started my business and it was only positives from then yeah. on there. You know, <laughs> when, when they say I was struggling to, to meet payroll, I'm like, oh, I know what that's like now. Yes. I have my version of that. You know, um, and it wasn't until I really started allowing myself to be grateful for what I had. Like, I thought it was wrong, but it was actually just part of it. You mm. know, it's just like part of the game. Um, I actually feel like I'm being rewarded by getting to like the next level as opposed to like stopping, resetting, trying something new and then consistently having to get back to that same level over and over again. Because yeah. I thought I, I was because I wasn't looking at it from a place of, of of the gift that it was, which is this growth on here. And when you get on the other side here, you good fam. And mm. if you learn, if you learn how to keep going through this year, like growth is inevitable. And so yeah. that's, that's what's really playing out for me right now. And, and, you know, if you look at um at entertainment, if you look at gaming and things like that and games just yeah. go crazy, but that that's modeled on life, right? We go through, we have these obstacles, we overcome the obstacles and we get a power up or we get a weapon or we get whatever, which is the tools, right, that we add to our toolkit. And then we get to the end and then we've got to fight a boss and then we're like, oh, this is terrible. And it takes us a few attempts and then we fight the boss and we're on the next level. And then the obstacles still come at us, but they're, chal- they're a bit more challenging, right? And and that's life. You know, our first obstacle that we have to overcome, our first obstacles is learning to communicate and walk, right? And so that's the basics. And then once we've done that, then we've got to learn how to manage emotions and and eat. And, you know, then we've got to learn how to socialize in schooling systems. And so we're just always leveling up. And I think we, if we can frame it that way, the obstacles then we can laugh at them sometimes we go oh failed that boss okay get some better weapons let's go right like that's what it's about do you mind if i say something on this one in go. Particular? yeah what, what i one of the things that i've been finding here especially as i've like allowed myself to go down more about like the outlier path and, and continue to, to level up what i alone can do or one one of the things that are like most special to me is that it's almost like in the video game, like if you're playing Mario Brothers, like the original yeah. ones, like you're always moving to the right. Like it's more or less like you're doing the same thing. And you, and the boss, while it's different, it's still fundamentally the same. So for me, like I told you, like my greatest fear is being alone. Mm. Um, the reason I say that and the reason I presence that is that oftentimes the real issue just comes, it's just another boss at a higher level <laughs> of being alone. Yeah. Am I willing, like at first, can I can I be alone in a room? Now to the point of like, can I say this out loud? Can mm-hmm. I, can I, you know what I mean? Just ask me a question. Can I speak my honest truth in here, which I said was my practice or was like, you know? Yeah. Um, and can I say it in here? And can I, can I risk ostracizing myself with everyone here? Am mm-hmm. I at that level right now? Mm. You know, and, and so that's what I've been finding to be be the actual game of like the up level like how how far can i take this how alone am i willing to be can i be like there's just different levels that keep growing with it where it's like it, it feels like it's something new it feels like it's something different and every time i be, beat the level i get a chance to like it's smooth for a while until yeah. I'm like why isn't this working yeah. and it's like <laughs> oh because my ego's caught in my ego's tied to what everyone else is going to think of me and i'm not i'm not willing to let go of everything that i've built here mm. to build that mm. next thing that that really should come to life or so forth so uh i i love the game analogy i love playing games with with with, with people in my ecosystem and um it just really feels appropriate right here yeah and you know we've talked about doing some collabs and some work together and i'm even oh, yeah. looking forward to setting up and playing a game with you as well Nima. yeah it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be really really good so if people were looking to reach out to you and why wouldn't they? I mean, I, I endorse a hundred percent, but what's the best way to find you? Yeah. So, so I'm most uh, alive and active on in, inside the outliers edge community. So what I love, what I like to do here is um, I can also, like, what I would say is this, you can find me on the socials at outliers edge, or you can find me by my name, Niyama Zhang. Um, I'm on all the socials and it's, it's, I'm, I'm 
with that. Just send me a message there. Um, but in particular, like I, I think about like cats and the octopus and, and I'm thinking about like the people here and um, I just want to create an opportunity to like go and play and, and continue to expand on this year. So uh, if you're good with this year, I think one of the, I'd love to like leave a gift uh, for the people that are listening here as one of the ways to, to go, go forth here. And I think uh, like, in there, it, it's it's an opportunity to come in and play inside of, inside of the community. I have a couple of different bonuses specifically for people who will like come in through through your link here. Um, yep. But if, if if you're good with this, I'll I'll share the link with you. We'll we'll put it maybe we can put it in the show notes, and uh, anyone that comes in through that way gets a gets an opportunity to get um become experience the community uh, and then also get a couple additional like bonuses and some 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 one on one time and beyond like that. Would you be okay with that? That would be amazing. Thank you so yeah, much. I, I think you have I think you have an awesome tribe and and I would love to contribute as, as much as I can in that way. All right. Like this is what partnership looks like to me. I like I've been thinking about it, right? And I'm like, yeah. how do we create it in a way where it's like it's not just about the individual, but it's act like everyone grows. Yeah. Everyone gets something. So that's that's a place I like to play with with you. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. And from on behalf of all the listeners as well, thank you so much. And I'll, as you mentioned, I'll put all those in the show notes. So anyone that interested is interested, just go and sign up and, you know, expand yourself, play the game, do the dance. You know, that's what it's all about, right? That's, that's the game. That's, that's the way to, that's the way to go do life. I'm finding. Yeah. Living it up. So thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate you and your time. And um, I look forward to us catching up a lot more and um, in the future. Same here. Thank you for for your generosity. And thank you for, for just like your depth of person to bring it into this conversation. You're, you're amazing. Thanks for joining in and listening to this episode of Catching the Octopus podcast. It's been great having you here. And if you'd like to go and like and subscribe and maybe even leave a five-star rating if you think it's worth it, I'd really appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you in our next episode.